Hello, welcome to this third video in a series about experiments in the digital age. In the last video, I talked about how you can move beyond simple experiments. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can make it happen. That is, how can you turn your ideas into actual experiments using digital infrastructure? This is material that's covered in chapter four of Bit by Bit. So I think there are four main strategies for actually making digital field experiments happen. And none of these approaches are perfect. So as I go through the approaches, what I'm gonna do is kind of <clears throat> evaluate them in terms of different dimensions. I think there are four main dimensions along which they vary, and I wanna tell you what those are now. The first is cost. So cost includes cost in terms of money to build the experiment and to pay participants potentially, but it also includes cost in terms of your time. Um, so that is cost measured in money and time. Control is the amount that you can control the environment in which people are doing your experiment. Realism reflects the extent to which your experiment involves more or less naturally occurring treatments in a more or less naturally occurring environment with participants that might naturally encounter these kinds of treatments in these kind of environments. And then the last dimension along which these approaches vary is ethics. That is, to what extent are you likely to run into ethical challenges with this approach? So the first approach I wanna talk about is uh, what I would call partner with the powerful. And so sometimes people have this idea, so this would be, for example, developing a partnership with Facebook and running an experiment on Facebook. Now, it doesn't have to be just companies, there's also governments and nonprofit organizations that are often doing things in the world uh, that could potentially benefit from experimentation. And so this approach partnering with the powerful, the cost is generally low because most of the costs of building and running the experiment are, are borne by the partner. The control is somewhat medium. That is, uh, sometimes the partner will um, be excited about the kind of experiment you want to run, but sometimes they won't. So there are a lot of treatments that they wouldn't allow you to evaluate, for example. Uh, the realism is generally high because the partners are working on real treatments in real environments and the ethics is potentially complex because you're embedding in an existing system and, and often explicitly attempting to change that system. So a lot of times uh, people ask me, how do I partner with the powerful? I have this experiment I want to do. How do I partner with someone to help me do it? Um, I think a key thing is the word partner. And then this is not, I want someone to give me their data. So often I have people come to me and say, I want someone such to give me their data. And that's just not gonna work. I can tell you that right now. If that is your approach going in, it's not gonna work. So think really carefully about how you can be a partner. And that requires work from the other person and it requires work from you. Uh, it often helps to start with personal relationships. I think you have to realize that the people that you're talking to are very busy and you should imagine that whoever you're working with at the company is busier than you. And so why is that person gonna even stop to listen to hear what you have to say? I think it helps if you have a personal relationship already with some trust built up between you. Another good strategy for partnering is to do internships. So many companies want to hire computational social scientists and they view internships as a good way to potentially hire these people permanently. And so, by doing an internship, you can help build some personal relationships um, that will enable you to do these kind of experiments. They also, internships are really good for helping you to realize what is easy and what is hard. I think an, a big difficulty in partnering is that it's not always easy for you from the outside to know what is easy for the other person to do and what is hard. And so the more you understand about the constraints that your partner has, the better partner you can be. And so doing an internship helps you understand those constraints. And the fourth idea for how to build a good partnership is to find Pastor's quadrant. And so let me explain what I mean by that. Um, so this is a schematic that illustrates Pastor's quadrant. And taking a step back, it's the case that some academics seem to think that there is applied research, which is motivated by use. And then there is, and this is kind of grimy and not the kind of thing we do. Uh, and then there's basic research, which seeks fundamental understanding, and that's the kind of thing academics should be doing. Just to be clear, I don't agree with this, but that's um, a belief that that is somewhat prevalent. Um, 
And so the idea of Pastor's Quadrant kind of demolishes that, and it does it through the example of Pastor. So Pastor, as we know, developed the germ theory of disease, which is an important uh, improvement in our fundamental understanding, but he developed the germ theory of disease while he was working in a beet factory, a factory that was trying to turn beet juice into alcohol. And so the things kept blowing up in the factory and he speculated that there might be some underlying uh, organisms that were causing these explosions. And so there, Pastor's work was, it did advance fundamental understanding, but it was also simultaneously quite applied. And so this example kind of shows that th there cannot be a one dimensional continuum between applied and basic because Pastor's research was kind of both. And so for this reason, Donald Stokes proposes this two dimensional um, uh, schematic. Um, there is work that seeks fundamental understanding and there's work that's motivated by use. And there's some work that is both motivated by use and seeks fundamental understanding. So this is Pasteur's quadrant here. This is really where we wanna be. So sometimes many academics are here in what he called Bohr's quadrant. So there is a quest for fundamental understanding but there's no consideration of use. So Bohr's work about the structure of the atom actually turns out to have a ton of very important practical uses, but that was not motivating it at the time. And then there's also another quadrant, um, which we see more commonly in companies, uh, pure applied research, where there's a strong consideration of use, but there's not a quest for fundamental understanding. So that Edison is a great example of this. So Edison's work um, did not advance our fundamental understanding of electricity, but it provided many, many useful benefits to society by allowing us to harness electricity for all kinds of great inventions. And so if you want to partner with the powerful, it really helps if you can be in Pastor's quadrant, because here you're going to be, your partner probably has a consideration of use and you probably want to quest for fundamental understanding and Pastor's quadrant is a way to make it a true partnership where both parties can benefit. So those are, those are four ideas for how you can build successful partnerships um, to, to run experiments. So now a second style of approach is not to build partnerships. And in fact, I generally find these partnerships very difficult to build and very risky. And so there are a whole nother set of strategies that involve just doing it yourself. That is don't partner, do it yourself. And there are three different ways that you can do it yourself. So the first is to use existing systems. So let me give you an example of this. This was a study by Doliak and Stein. And so what they did is they used a website uh, similar to Craigslist. Uh, they don't say in the paper the name of the website, but we can call it Craigslist for now. It's a good mental model. Um, so they sold these are actually um, iPods uh, that they sold on Craigslist and they varied um, the hand that was holding it in the picture. So the hand was either white, black, or white with a tattoo. And then they compared, for example, the probability that a sale would occur and the sale price as a function of this characteristics of the seller. And so to do this study, they did not need to partner with Craigslist. They didn't need to build their own website. They were able to put their experiment on top of existing infrastructure, which allowed them to do the experiment at a national scale um, and at, without actually doing a lot of web development themselves. So that's an example of using existing systems. The cost is generally low because you don't have to construct the system and you don't have to spend time building relationships with partners. The control is generally low because you don't control the system. The realism is high because you're working in realistic systems, real systems, and the ethics are potentially complex because you're potentially intervening in a real system. The next strategy is to build your own experiment. And so let me give you an example of this. This is a uh, music lab. This is the, my dissertation research. I'll talk about this in more detail in the next video, but in this um, research, we built a website where people could come and download new music, but we could control the information they had about the behavior of other people. And so with Music Lab, the cost was medium and actually quite high in some ways. To build your own experiment is expensive and hard. 
the control is very high because you are constructing the whole environment. The realism is medium because although it is not taking place in an existing system, you are able to craft the system that mimics real systems. And the ethics is relatively easy because you control the system yourself. So finally, I want to talk about a third strategy for doing it yourself, which is building a product. So this is Movie Lens. Movie Lens is a website built by researchers that uh, allowed them to make movie recommendations to people. And this was built before Netflix created its movie recommendation system. And so at the time, this was a valuable service that many people wanted to use. And this then provided the researchers a platform for, to do experimentations. So this has the potential to create this kind of virtuous cycle that I talked about a little bit when I talked about all our ideas in the video about surveys. So by doing more research, you can build a better product. By building a better product, you get more users and more research, and you can get this kind of virtuous cycle. The challenge, of course, is that building a product is incredibly costly and incredibly difficult. Um, it is very hard to build something that people want to use and that scientifically advances your and and that scientifically advances your research. Like already, many many people, many entrepreneurs are struggling to build products that people want to use, and they don't have the extra constraint that you have that you want to make it useful for research. So the costs of building a product are extremely high. The control is also extremely high because you're the boss. You can make it do what you want. The realism is high because you have people participating because they care about the product and the ethics are relatively easy again because you're in total control. And so I think it's this, these examples illustrate that there is no one way to do an experiment in the digital age. Um, in fact, there are multiple ways. I think there are four main strategies. Each approach has strengths and weaknesses. And so as you're thinking about your research question, you can try to think which of these approaches is most appropriate given the kinds of questions that I want to answer. So that's uh, the end of this video about making it happen. And in the next video, I'll talk more about Music Lab, the experiment uh, that we built, and talk a little bit more how that illustrates the idea of zero variable cost data, which is a very powerful um, approach. If you can figure out how to harness it, it allows you to do experiments um, that are quite large and allows you to do stuff that would be very, very hard to do otherwise. Thank you.